Okay, so um, Sony has machine learning uh, silicon within the PlayStation 5 Pro. That's now been confirmed now. What's also interesting is that the developer disclosures specifically describe it as a custom solution, which suggests that it's something bespoke to Sony. And um, they've got um, their own version of what sounds like DLSS called PSSR, which is, what is that, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution? Is that right? Yeah. Um, Alex, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, okay, so uh, where do I want to start here? I guess with the acronym itself, um, the spectral aspect of it, um, I, we really don't know what that is completely referring to. But I would just take a guess at it that is looking at uh, not just like the pure red, green, blue color image of of what whatever is being done with uh, a game's rendering and then the motion vectors, but it's looking at some aspect spectrally, so some some other way animals tend to see the world i don't know uh <laughs> it's going to be playing with i, I presume leveraging this that the fact that your perception is different for certain aspects of an image and then applying machine learning based upon those principles to get a better looking reconstruction at the end as to how it's done in detail i will have no idea until they detail it um fair enough. yeah but the one really interesting aspect of this is i think the documentation makes direct reference to the fact that 1080p to 4k is uh, referenced, I believe, directly in the documentation. And that is very good. And it flies directly uh, kind of in the face of uh, AMD's ongoing efforts with FSR 2, interestingly enough, where FSR 2 was made as a competitor solution in the PC space to DLSS. And I found, and I think a lot of people have talked about it, who know about it, saying the really interesting aspect of DLSS is that it can take images that are one-fourth the amount of pixels and blow them up to four times the amount of pixels and still look really good. I mean, yeah. not perfect, but still really good. And that's one area that checkerboard rendering couldn't do. That is one area that FSR cannot do, FSR 2. Uh, whenever you look at the comparison of a game running an FSR 2 performance mode versus XESS performance mode using the XMX cores on an Intel Arc chip or using one using DLSS on an RTX card, it really blows them out of the water, the DLSS and XESS implementations. They're really great. Um, so this is great. Uh, and I think it offsets everything else here in the document as being the most interesting thing here and the one for the most potential and the one that thing that is actually going to offer perhaps the largest tangible benefit for anyone using this machine is that it's going to offer we have to see it in person, of course. But it's going to presumably offer really good anti-aliasing, great temporal stability, and since it's machine learning, it's going to be avoiding a lot of the pitfalls that we see in FSR2. Uh, and this generation, as it's been going on, has been rife with this. Now the FSR2 has gained popularity on the consoles, or not. There's games that still don't use it, but if there's an open, if there's a library here that that they're going to provide from Sony, and it seems like they are based upon the documentation to just naturally plug it into a game engine with the same inputs as FSR2 and DLSS, it's going to lead to really great image quality in games based upon XCSS and DLSS. So rejoice. This is, this is really good. Yeah, I mean, they are talking about um, a, a huge increase in effective resolution, right, which is what it's all about. And I've been thinking about this, and... Um, yeah, we have, we're seeing a lot of instances now where base resolutions on PlayStation 5 games are basically too low, and then they're using FSR2 to upscale to 1440p or 4K, and it just kind of looks a bit grim. So on the one hand, we've got additional GPU re resources to increase the base resolution, and then we have PSSR to take it up to 4K or even 1440p, as uh, may well happen on the more demanding games. And or 1800p, as we saw with Cyberpunk. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely um, a, what I would describe as a game-changing improvement to image quality, potentially here, if PSSR is on a par with XESS on an, Inter, on an Intel GPU or NVIDIA's DLSS. I'm curious what you think about this, Oliver. 
Yeah, I, I think that FSR2 is not so good in a lot of games. <laughs> like it, it does. It, it yeah. can look good, but there are certain scenarios where yeah. it just isn't really a good fit. And if you've got like very fast moving content, it, it can tend to fall apart at low resolutions, I think. Yeah. It, it does depend a lot on the content and the way the camera works and how detailed the yeah. artwork is and how, like, are they using lots of screen space reflections and stuff like that, like in, uh, in, in the recent, um, Oh gosh. With Sea of Thieves. That was that was tough for me. But, uh, yeah, that that was also for me too. Yeah, so right. basically <laughs> basically, you know, things that make upscaling easier, make upsampling easier, tend to favor FSR too. So that's not a not a huge surprise given how it tends to function. But here we're interestingly talking about increases in resolution, increases in image quality that might come independent of actual increases in compute, which theoretically freeze up GP resources to do other more interesting things, which I think is, that's actually a really good thing because when you look at consoles, you know, a 1440p image on a console can look really good in a 4K display. Whereas I would say for a PC monitor, maybe that's not quite as true. So if they can actually open up resources to use this thing more like a PC, give you some flexibility on the rendering side of things, then I think that could be very compelling, presuming the CPU doesn't pose an issue. Mm -hmm. Alex, there's been a mooted two millisecond cost for PSSR. Yeah. What does that actually mean? Uh, I mean, in the in the grand scheme of things, it means nothing because it's contextless. <laughs> but in the in the context of what developers have to be used to, uh, for example, FSR two from our interviews with AMD costs around two milliseconds on an Xbox Series X going up to four. Okay, so this is what they're trying to say with that: is it costs roughly the amount of same amount of frame time as FSR two? Okay. Uh, so, um, and you're getting way better quality, like ridiculously better quality in a lot of instances. So this is great, and they they point to the fact that it'll be optimized further. Uh, I point this to that the, at the fact that DLS over DLSS two over time up into its current three. X iteration has been optimized, took advantage of sparsity, which was added to Ampere and Lovelace GPUs after the fact. Um, they also changed the model over time to be just better, uh, more efficient for the same cost in terms of millisecond frame time. So like nowadays on like a 4090 DLSS costs like less than 0 0.5 milliseconds. It's ridiculously cheap nowadays, but that's why they, they're keeping it up with it by adding things like frame gen, which increases its cost, and then also adding in ray reconstruction, which further increases the cost as well too. So for me, this is just like, okay, you can still target similar overall frame times as you do with FSR2 at the moment, and it's potentially getting better. So that's all good news. If it was something like the Switch 2 situation where we're curious to see how they use DLSS given the presumably larger frame time costs on mobile hardware here this they're saying this costs the same as comp competing techniques on what you're used to already developing for ps5 or xbox series x mm -hmm. yeah um i guess we should also talk about um backwards compatibility or rather the ability to let me rephrase that the ability to patch prior playstation 5 uh, games to gain access uh, to five pro features. And uh, we do have some information about this from the developer disclosure. And it is quite interesting because if you go back to PlayStation 5 and look at what we called Back Compat Plus, it was quite limited because um, uh, developers right. had to update their old games to the latest SDKs in order to use the PlayStation 5 um, features. Sony has come up with a very interesting solution to this, which is that um, it looks like all games can benefit from PSSR um, if the developer goes back to them, even if they're on older SDKs, um, it looks like developers can go back to those games so they can patch in support for PSSR without having to update the latest SDK. And this is potentially great news, right? I mean, there is a memory footprint implication. It's been cited as being something like 250 megabytes. So developers would need to find that memory on those older um, older titles. Um, but this is potentially awesome, right? Because a lot of the games that are out there, which are unlikely to f receive full um, upgrades to the latest SDK and all of the new 5 Pro features, it does mean that you can at least get the PSSR 
upgrade in there if the developer goes back and adds that feature, which I think is excellent because there's been so many games where, the, you know, let's face facts, the resolution has been too low and the upscaling hasn't been good enough to offset that. So the ability to swap in uh, PSSR um, is, is highly compelling, right? I think that's great.